Okay, so when it comes to password cracking, again, we need two pieces of information to get into a system. Hopefully, we've got the username from our enumeration testing. The next thing is then obviously cracking the password. And there's so many different variables that come into play that there'll be times that you'll actually feel this need to create a workflow almost because of the different concepts or variables that can be thrown at you. But let's start off with the basics and see how many different methods that we can use to obtain a password. The first thing that we obviously need to do is be able to identify the systems that are protected by passwords and of course which ones are not and we should have seen that through both the scanning and enumeration stage now if the system is protected by a password the next question you ask yourself is do you have access to the password already through possible vulnerabilities that you discovered during scanning or possibly even through Google hacking right the next question you have to ask yourself is if you don't have that then are they using complexity because this is going to help me to determine what the password is and again this is something that we should have been able to answer during our enumeration stage or possibly even through social engineering yep that would be another way of trying to get a hold of passwords people typically use things that they can remember that are meaningful to them so understanding who your target is can sometimes reveal out a password as well as doing electronic social engineering such as sending an email making it look like it came from the IT department asking you to reset set your password to 12345 while they test out a new system. We could also do this in a physical presence as well. You know, show up at the desk and use an authoritative a social engineering attack like Mr. Wayne of Wayne Enterprises told me to come down here and look at your system. Now, while we're there, another thing that you can implement or another way that you can discover passwords is through simple shoulder surfing. This is where we just kind of look out of the corner of our eyes to see passwords as people type them in or as they log in. Now, I I use this all the time. In fact, my kids probably hate me to this day because they could never figure out why I was able to guess their passwords. Well, besides the social engineering aspect, I often shoulder surfed my kids. One of my sons thought that he would protect his phone from dad knowing what's going on in his life. By the way, my kids truly do hate me because I'm not that parent who doesn't know what's going on as far as electronically is concerned. But he protected his phone with a code. And all I had to do was wait for him to receive a text message and I just would glance over every now and then and pick up for example the first two characters and I would just make a note of those and a couple minutes later or hours later or again time is on my side right even a couple days later I see him pick up his phone and type in his code and I ignore the first two characters because I've made note of those and I pick up the second two characters actually a combination of shoulder surfing and social engineering worked in my case because my boy ended up using his school ID as his code so once I saw the pattern emerging, I went, oh, I know the rest of it. I know some of you guys are probably having a heart attack or wanting to yell at me saying that I'm invading my kids privacy. But hey, that's a conversation we can have for another day. Another way that we can obtain passwords would be doing the ooh, yuck, right? Dumpster diving. Oh, it's so funny because so many people don't think of this as being a legitimate form of gaining access to passwords, but it's done all the time. It's amazing how many IT guys write down and then print out or log their passwords for their different systems, and then eventually paperwork gets thrown away. Or again, the dumpster diving can actually help us expose more information through the social engineering aspect of figuring out what this company is doing. What products do they have? What are the names of the people in different departments? They're there's a whole bunch that I can learn from here besides what they're eating for lunch, which that's really the gross part. And if you haven't learned from my previous courses, do yourself a favor personally, invest in a paper shredder, please, and make sure it's a cross cut shredder. Again, people who get their identity stolen never think it's going to happen to them. And I shred everything, including offers for credit cards. The last thing I need is someone stealing that out of my garbage and going on a shopping spree. Well, if I can't get a hold of a password through dumpster diving or through through shoulder surfing or social engineering, I can start getting a little more active. So far, this has been very, very passive, very hard to detect if someone's shoulder surfing you because, hey, maybe you're just checking out their earrings or maybe you're just checking out their tennis shoes or their fancy schmancy keyboard or their cool mouse pad. But getting active, we start off with doing what they refer to as dictionary attacks. 
This is again where we use certain programs along with certain text files that have variations of different names or words that the program can quickly parse through to see if the password equals one of those entries in the text file. Uh, yeah, but Dale, we lock out accounts after three failed attempts. Really? All of your accounts? The administrative account? Your service accounts? In fact, if I've enumerated you correctly, I know that you allow three or five failed attempts within a 15-minute period. And so I can set up my program to try four attempts every 20 minutes and automate that process. Again, time is on my side, not on your side. And when we talk about dictionary attacks and passwords, you always hear people say, make sure that you don't use a real word. Trust me, you've heard me say this before in our Hacking the System course. I've got password files for Klingon, Elfish, Danish, Spanish, German, movie actors' names, Lord of the Rings character names, Greek mythology names. Trust me, if it's a word in any language whatsoever, I'm going to have access to that. Now, if dictionary attacks don't work on my pen test, I'm then going to go at it with a brute force attack. This, of course, is where we go through and try every possible combination and variation of characters, both in upper, lower, numerical characters, as well as possibly special characters. Now, brute force attacks can be quite noisy on the network, unless, of course, I've somehow gotten a hold of your user account database again, your Active Directory database or your local SAM file, and I do this offline, in which case I can be as noisy as I want to be. Now, one of the things that we hopefully have discovered during the penetration testing of enumeration is the different rules that somebody may have in place or your target may have in place for passwords. As I mentioned before, lockout periods, lockout thresholds, the length of the password, complexity requirements. If I know that you have to change passwords every 60 days, I know that I've got 60 days to try to attempt to figure out what this password is before you're going to rotate. Or I know that it has to be at least 12 characters long. And this is where I can go through and customize my password cracking utility to apply those rules to what it's trying to go through in brute force. Now, if all else fails, the last thing that we can try to attempt to do if we still haven't retrieved all the passwords, or at least the important ones here, we can also implement a password guessing scheme. I've actually been more successful with password guessing than I have anything else. Just because as you social engineer somebody, again, they make passwords based off things that they know or things that are around them. Often I'll be in an office and I'll just simply look around at words that may be displayed, such as the model of the monitor or any signage that they may have nearby or within their view. I look around and you'd be surprised how many times I'm actually get in using what I see as well as what I know about that person or that target. Now, if password guessing doesn't work, we're going to get extremely active. We'll start by trying to first send a Trojan to see if we can load up possibly a keylogger program or even maybe a piece of spyware that will help me to determine what the password is. I might also be able to do something called hash injection where I can take a compromised hashed password and inject it into a local session and use that hash to basically validate my access to the resource. We often refer to this as passing the hash. Also, we have wire sniffing. If we run some type of wire packet sniffing tool, such as Wireshark or even Microsoft Network Monitor, there are certain protocols and certain services that will actually pass the password in clear text. And hey, while I'm sniffing, let's go ahead and maybe attempt a man-in-the-middle attack. This is where I sit in between the user and the destination and receive all the packets and I'm able to look at everything. I can also use something called a replay attack. I'm going to try that on my pen test where I go through and I capture packets and the authentication tokens and then extract the information I need and then place the token back on the network to gain access. I can also attempt a rainbow table attack. Things that you may want to invest in as a pen tester is a subscription to a cloud server service. This is what attackers are using quite a bit because setting up these pre-calculated hashes of passwords makes it extremely easy and fast to gain access with the appropriate password. Unfortunately, storage is a big issue for you as well as computing power. So that's where the cloud services are really starting to help out folks. Now, something else we can try to implement is something referred to as a DNA or a distributed network attack. This is where we go through and we try to recover password protected files using the unused processes from multiple machines that we've already pwned on the network. They may be part of my little botnet to try to decrypt the password. Now, a lot of folks might think, well, you must be 
going after a domain controller or the you know mother of all systems on the network and that may not be the case many times I'll start off by trying to hit a box that no one's looking at because of the issue of people reusing the same passwords for different services as well as accounts for both local and domain administrative privileges I might try to go after a little bitty box sitting off to the side because that leads us into being able to escalate the privileges of a compromised box which is what we're going to talk about next.